The Atari Network is a fan channel and is not affiliated with Atari. The Atari logo and name is copyrights of their respective owners. Atari has not only been producing a ton of products lately, but they've licensed out their name to My Arcade, who have been also releasing mini arcade machines, Atari branded handhelds, and now the Atari Game Station Pro. The Game Station Pro is nothing new, as My Arcade has released several of these machines, and I hate to say it, but previous models look cheap and uninteresting. But this one caught my eye, not only for the Atari branding and sleek design, but because it advertised Atari 5200 and 7800 games, in addition to the usual and honestly tired 2600 games that these plug-and-plays always have. So is the My Arcade Atari Game Station Pro worth spending between $80 to $100 on this holiday season? Or is it something that should be ignored in favor of true Atari products like the 2600 Plus? Well, let me tell you. Let's start with unboxing the product. The packaging has the Atari name and logos front and center. It also shows the console and the interesting joysticks that the console includes. We'll get to those in a moment, but as you open the packaging, you'll find a certificate, a tiny instruction manual, eight AA batteries, two of those interesting joysticks, and of course, the console itself. You also get an HDMI cord and USB-C cord for power, but no power brick. The joysticks don't feel bad in the hand, and the placement of the buttons are interesting, especially the trigger on the back of the stick. Everything moves and presses just fine. I especially like the addition of the knob that acts as a paddle for paddle games. When you install the batteries in the joystick, it has a nice weight to it, and it actually feels pretty nice. Nicer than I imagined. The console itself has the expected HDMI out, USB power, and two USB-C slots in the front for, I assume, hooking up other controllers. There are two large buttons on the top that include power and home and a nice silver bit on the right side. You'll also find a USB slot on the side as well. Overall, the packaging and the console are pretty nice, and the joysticks not only have more buttons than I expected, but they feel nicer too. But it doesn't matter how nice the product looks or feels, we have to power it on and see how it performs. The intro and the menu are nothing to write home about, but they get the job done. As we venture into the Atari games, they split them into several different menus that include everything, 2600, 5200, 7800, arcade, along with paddle and recently played. There is the usual and expected 2600 games, with some interesting inclusions and maybe a few missing ones as well. The 2600 games are 3D Tic-Tac-Toe, Adventure, Adventure 2, Air Sea Battle, Aqua Venture, Asteroids, Atari Video Cube, Basic Math, Basketball, Bowling, Breakout, Canyon Bomber, Centipede, Championship Soccer, Circus Atari, Combat, Combat 2, Crystal Castles, Dark Chambers, Demons to Diamonds, Desert Falcom, Dodgem, Double Dunk, Drag Race, Fast Eddie, Fatal Run, Flag Capture, Football, Frog Pond, Golf, Gravatar, Hangman, Haunted House, Home Run, Human Cannonball, Indy 500, Maze Craze, Millipede, Miniature Golf, Missile Command, Moto Rodeo, Night Driver, Off the Wall, Outlaw, Pong aka Video Olympics, Quad Run, Radar Lock, Real Sports Baseball, Real Sports Basketball, Real Sports Boxing, Real Sports Football, Real Sports Soccer, Real Sports Tennis, Real Sports Volleyball, Road Runner, Saboteur, Save Mary, Secret Quest, Skydiver, Slot Racers, Solaris, Space Raid, Space War, Sprint Master, Steeplechase, Street Racer, Stunt Cycle, Submarine Commander, Super Baseball, Super Breakout, Super Football, Surround, Sword Quest, Earth World, Fire World, and Water World, Tempest, Video Checkers, Video Pinball, Warlords, Wizards, and Yars Revenge. There is some stuff on here I never expected to see, such as Roadrunner. Overall, there is a ton of filler in my opinion, but it's not a bad collection. It'll be worth it if the 5200 and 7800 games are as numerous and as solid. Speaking of which, here are the 5200 games. Centipede, Frisky Tom, Meeb Zork, Millipede, Missile Command, Real Sports Baseball, and Real Sports Basketball. Seven whole games. 
Now, I know a lot of games require the 5200 number pad or analog controls, but still, these seven are disappointing. Just a total lack of variety, in my opinion. Well, let's look at the 7800 games. You get Alien Brigade, Asteroids, Basket Brawl, Centipede, Dark Chambers, Desert Falcon, Food Fight, Motor Psycho, Real Sports Baseball, and Scrapyard Dog. Ten games. Again, I know they can't get the licensed stuff and all, but I can't help but to be disappointed. Maybe we can address the lack of 5200 and 7800 games later. You also get some Atari Arcade games, which is a nice touch. And they include Alpha 1, Asteroids, Asteroids Deluxe, Atari Baseball, Atari Football, Atari Soccer, Avalanche, Basketball, Canyon Bomber, Centipede, Cloud 9, Crystal Castles, Dominoes, Drag Race, Fire Truck, Food Fight, Gravatar, iRobot, Liberator, Lunar Battle, Lunar Lander, Major Havoc, Millipede, Missile Command, Monte Carlo, Night Driver, Pool Shark, Quantum, Red Baron, Runaway, Skydiver, Sky Raider, Space Duel, Super Breakout, Super Bug, Tempest, Tournament Table, Ultra Tank, and Warlords. 38 in all. Now that's more like it. Overall, there is some great games for most of the consoles and the arcade machines, but seeing so many versions of games like Missile Command and Centipede, along with many others having doubles, is disappointing to say the least. But the box has 200 plus games. So far, I've counted over 130, just under 140. The rest of the games are filled out in the bonus section, and these seem to be Pico selections from the NES, Genesis, Game Boy, and Arcade. I'm not going to get into each title here, you can see some of them in the video. The video won't focus on these, but I'll have them listed in the description. I was worried that the bonus games were going to be generic shovelware type stuff, but there's actually some decent things here. Just know they mostly play fine. I, I find the controller a bit of a hindrance in some of these games, especially the more action-oriented ones. Speaking of gameplay, how do the Atari games play? Well, not bad, honestly. The controller feels like a flight stick mixed with the original 2600 controller. And it works well for most of the Atari stuff. The emulation is fine, and all the games play as you would expect. The 5200 games can be a little confusing to start, but once you figure out the button placement, they work perfectly fine. I feel the major draw of the console was the addition of the 5200 and 7800 games. And while they are lacking, I feel the 7800 stuff isn't bad overall. Alien Brigade, Scrapyard Dog, Desert Falcon, Food Fight... Those are all excellent games, and they're emulated perfectly and the controllers work fine for these games. Overall, if you're interested in 2600 and Atari Arcade stuff, and have a passing interest in 5200 and 7800 games, then you'll probably be just fine with this console. But I can't help to feel that it's a bit overpriced. 40 to $50 feels more on point for what it is. Even with the controllers being as nice as they are, and the paddle functionality working pretty good overall, I do like that they're integrated right onto the joystick, and there's no need for an additional controller. I still feel $40 to $50 would be a good price tag for this. Sometimes the paddle games can function a little weird. Like in Breakout, the travel only seems to be in the middle of the dial, and if you go too far to one end or the other, well, you have to move back to the center to get any movement out of the paddle. But it works fantastic in games like Night Driver. But besides that, this console has one more aspect that might make it worth the money to you. And that's because there is an SD card slot on the console. With this, you can get an SD card and put a games folder on it and install more 2600, 5200, 7800, Arcade, NES, Genesis, and Game Boy games. And there might be even more emulation, but I think most people will be content with those consoles. You want to make sure your 2600 game files end in .a26, 5200 game files end in .a52, 7800 game files end in .a78, NES games end in .nes, Genesis games end in .bin, or bin, and Game Boy games end in .gb. Now there is currently no way to separate the games into different folders or lists, so everything loads into one big long list. And overall it feels kind of messy. You can do things like add prefixes such as 2600 and NES to the front of the game file names, but overall it still feels unorganized. But it's still okay if you only want to add a few of your favorites or a couple hundred games. It'll work perfectly fine. And so far, I've encountered no issues with 2600, NES, Genesis, or Game Boy stuff. However, if you're trying to emulate 5200 stuff, remember, this controller only has three real buttons on it. 
So anything that requires the number pad or analog control will not work well here. You'll mostly be fine with the 7800 library, except games that utilize the Pokey Audio don't seem to have any audio at all. So retail games Ballblazer and Commando are completely silent. This also includes Homebrew, like Bentley Bear's Crystal Quest and the rest of the Pokey games. But there's also an issue where some of the larger Homebrew, like 1942 and EXO, will not load at all. This is a shame because with the limited 5200 buttons on the joystick, and the lack of larger ROM compatibility and no Pokey, this makes this a GIMP Atari emulation machine. Still, if you're not interested in 7800 Homebrew, or the more complicated 5200 games, then I think you'll be just fine with this unit. The plug and play portion of this unit is only slightly better than the previous flashbacks to me, but with it being so simple to use and easy to add more ROMs, seems a bit nicer and more worth the money than the previous flashbacks. But if you were hoping for this to be the ultimate Atari emulation machine, well it's not. At least not with 5200 and 7800 stuff, and it's just disappointing the whole way through for those two consoles. But what's here does play well. Overall, I don't regret getting the MyArcade Atari Game Station Pro. I think the build quality is great, and its abilities are impressive. I wish it was a bit cheaper, but I'm sure the price will fall after the holiday season, if any stock remains. At least, I hope it will. I recommend it to people with a passing interest in Atari, but the more hardcore fans might be disappointed. At least a little bit. I'd call it a step in the right direction, and a slight step up from the flashbacks, but only slightly. Me, myself? Well, I'm glad I have a 7800 proper and a VCS, let's just put it like that. So guys, what do you think of the Atari Game Station Pro? Have you bought this or any of the other licensed products from my arcade? Do you like any of them? Will you be picking up one of these or letting it pass you by? Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next video.